here, but they've made some key additions, and they're among the league favorites now. There's a real hunger around this team, Chris, and with the fan base, they really think they've got a shot to make some noise this year. And they do, Boog, and I don't think that's unrealistic. They made some nice moves in the offseason, tried to build up their roster, and now they look primed for a big year. Of course, that's not a guarantee of success. All right, first pitch coming up. Our starting pitcher in this one, Joe Musgrove. Chris, what are you looking for from him? It's always interesting to see how he utilizes all of his pitches and how many of those he has a good feel for on that given day. When he's right, he's really able to keep hitters guessing, and all of his stuff seems to be coming out of the same arm slot, the same tunnel, and that can make life very difficult on his opponents. The next pitch misses, and that's ball one. To the right side. And he handles it himself for the out. Here's a Mets lineup now. Now with their ace on the mound today, they're just looking to provide him a little bit of run support, and they'll see what they can do for him. Book, you have to be really careful when you've got a guy like this on the mound for you to not become a spectator. You know that he doesn't give up a whole lot, but sometimes guys get a little too comfortable and don't have an urgency to score runs. You have to make sure you put him in a situation where he can get the W, but also you guys can cruise to the finish line and not have to worry about a comeback in the end. Next pitch misses inside at one and one. Of course, when we mention Joe Musgrove, you have to bring up he pitched the first no-hitter in Padres history. Fittingly enough, the San Diego native pitched a no-no against Texas in 2021. Cuts and misses. It's a strikeout. Came inside with that two-strike fastball nicely and just bunched him up on the inside part of the plate. Couldn't get around on it and catch it out front. Many times if you do, it's a foul ball. And you know a lot of pitchers, they really don't like working inside with two strikes because they do not want to hit that batter. And when they've got him up against the ropes, got to figure out a way to put him away. Did a nice job right there. Next offering is in for a strike. No score, just getting started. Top of the first. Now a screamer into the outfield. He's got it, and that'll end the inning. Nothing doing for the Mets. And now the Marlins will have a crack at things. No score. You're watching Major League Baseball. Back here in Miami, towing the slab in today's game, Carlos Rodon. Yeah, Boog, when you're a teammate of a guy like this, you love when it's his turn to pitch. He's out there on the mound carrying himself with a ton of confidence. That gives other guys confidence that, hey, the other team's not going to score much. All we've got to do is have good at-bats, put up some runs, and we should be able to get a win. He's got some of the best stuff around the league. So if he's on, he has the ability to control the game, and guys aren't really going to get much to hit. On the ground, Correa handles the chance. Throws across the diamond, one up, one down. And time now for the Marlins lineup. They're dealing with a top-level arm on the mound, so this figures to be a tough matchup for them. What's the key to the offense today, Singy? Oh, Boog, I think when you got a guy that's this talented on the mound, you got to find ways to disrupt his rhythm, it's make him uncomfortable a little bit. The guys that can handle the bat and perhaps, you know, bunt, bunt for a base hit, get him moving off the mound. If you're in the box and he seems to be just in a flow, step out, mess up his timing, somehow try to get in his head a little bit. And then when he does come in the zone, you may only get one pitch. You better not miss it. That's Next one point. misses, ball two. And Singy, as a team, you need to make the most of the very few opportunities he's going to give you, right? Absolutely. And, and you know, if you don't get to guys like this a lot of times early, once they really settle in, it's going to be the later innings that they hand that ball over to a reliever if they do at all. Swing and a miss, and he got him. And now two gone just a great slider right there and I think the key for pitchers and what hitters don't want to see is if a pitcher misses with that pitch that he misses off the edge of the strike zone rather than in the middle of the strike zone and right there excellent execution and it finished up in a perfect spot now the 0-1 Turner pops it up Miranda moving under it 
and makes the play and that's out number three and the Marlins down quietly scoreless after one back here at the ballpark and now the first baseman Jose Miranda Jose Miranda Musgrove back to work and a good eye there Musgrove an all-star a season ago he features a slider a four-seamer a cutter a curve and he works in a sinker Dave Lawrence behind the plate today consistent and pretty accurate with the balls and strikes yeah he's one of those guys spook that just keeps the game moving nothing overly unique about the strike zone that he calls and as a result he's appreciated by both sides Fouls it off, still one and two. How much were you aware of the umpire scouting report or even who was going to be umpiring? Not a whole lot. I mean, there were a couple of umpires that weren't real good. But outside of that, you just kind of went into the game, especially back when I was playing. Well, he found himself behind in the count right there, but he didn't give in. Anytime you rip a line drive the other way, you feel really good about what you did at the plate. You trusted your hands, you let the ball travel, and you took the barrel straight to it. That's great work right there. And now it's going to be Nick Fortes. Next pitch is inside, and it's one and one. Nobody out. Runner at first. Next pitch inside. Two and one. And there's the strike. In the dirt. Blocked. He's into second easily on the wild pitch. And there goes the double play possibility. And he deals. Hacks and misses. It's a strikeout. That cutter right there had just enough movement on it to get the swing and miss. It wasn't a great location by any means. That's typically a spot that hitters can handle. So I'd say he fooled him with just enough of that late action. Now batting Jerickson Profar. In there in its own one. late that time and it's strike two Miranda leads off second with one gone in the inning next pitch has popped up drops into the glove and there's two down Nick Ahmed here to hit And that one hit to first. He handles it himself. Third out, and that ends the frame. Mets leave one. We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score. And welcome back. Now Matt Chapman at the plate. It's interesting he plays kind of a, a power spot defensively, but runs pretty well. So when you're looking at that position, you're not expecting someone that has maybe above average speed, but he does. And the first pitch misses for ball one. And I think that skill set really upgrades the position because when you have that, that kind of speed, two. it makes the whole team that much better. Two and oh. Pitch misses inside, and that's ball three. What about him playing another position on defense, one that would require a little more range? Absolutely, and I think if push came to shove where they had to make a, a move during a game, it surprise a lot of people. You might even be able to put him in center field. The wind of the pitch. Ground ball right side. Sends it to first. Leadoff man retired here in the second. Now it's Randy Rosarena. Yeah. 
in there for strike one. Felt impressed that he went right after him on that first pitch. That's the key. Try to get ahead in the count, then you can play around a little bit more as the at bat expands. And he's down 0-2 as he swings through it. Quickly in an 0-2 count, you've got to figure out a way to shorten your path to the baseball. Put it in play somewhere, then you got a chance. In the dirt, gets it to first. Two up, two down. That's that classic wipeout slider below the zone right there. Just nasty. Looks like a fastball thigh high that you've got to protect the zone, and then it's just that late break that fools you and kind of makes you look silly. Tim Anderson in the box now. No balls and a strike. Next offering misses, and a count one and two. It's a good take. Next pitch inside, two and two. He's really tightening up his hitting zone with two strikes here. I love it. And now it's filled up. And there's ball four. Well, he opted to go with the off-speed stuff on that 3-2 with the bases empty. Close pitch, but now he's got to work out of the stretch. Here's Charlie Blackman. First pitch, and that's in for a strike. Swing and a line drive, base hit out of the center field. Around second is Anderson. Goes to third, in there. And now they've got runners at the corners with two outs. Just so sound in his mechanics. Hits against a firm front side, and the hands just continue to carry through the middle of the field. Now it's Julie Guriel. Line drive, could be extra bases. One run across, Blackman coming home, and he's got a double. Across is the runner from first. It's 2-0. He was all over that one. I love the approach he had right there with that pitch. Not trying to do too much, but still looking to drive it, and that's exactly what he's able to do into the opposite field gap for the double. Here's Christian Vasquez. And that one wrapped foul. Here comes a pitch. Oh. And it's even up. That's where you want it. It's a good miss. pitch got him inning over but they'll pick up a couple runs here both coming on this two-run double it's now a two-nothing ball game it's major league baseball on the show back here at lone depot park Here's the rookie right fielder, Andy Pajes, trying to pick up his first knock in the big leagues. Oh, that got away from him. And he's going to reach on a hit by pitch to lead off the inning. Well, that one might sting for a bit, but it helps the team and it boosts the OBP boog. Sometimes that trade off is worth it, but you know, sometimes it's not. Outfield deep here, trying to prevent anything over their heads. And now Jacob Berry. First pitch, and he just misses. Looking for his first big league hit right here. Double play ball to second. Over to Turner for one. On to Guriel. Two. And stepping in for New York, Jamal Howe. Grounded out his first time up. And that's in there for strike one. 
Howe hitting leadoff in today's game. He joined the team as a free agent. The 0 2. Good eye in that spot. Really good take, especially with two strikes. Out to short. In time to Guriel. And that's the third out. Back here in Miami as we go to the last of the third. And at the play for Miami, Starling Marte. Rodone back to work. That's in for a strike. Rodone goes six feet, three inches, 30 years old now. And he was selected to the All-Star game last year. Lifted in the air right center field. Pajas sizes this one up, brings it in with a nice running grab. One away. Kyle Schwarber comes up to hit here. One home run shy of 200 for his career. In there, and it's 0 and 1. Schwarber, multi time All Star, 30 years old now, a former first round pick in 2023. Foul ball there. One down, base is empty. Ball one. I don't think he was trying to miss by that much in an 0 2 count. Just tried to overthrow that pitch. Now with the shift on, hits right into it, whips it to first, and a couple of quick outs. Deceptive slider right there, stayed in the tunnel a long time, got that hitter out front, rolled over it, put it on the ground. Here's Turner now. Sharp grounder, that's through for a base hit. With that fastball, even though it's high velocity, you've got to live on the outer edges. When it's right on a tee, right down the middle, professional hitters are not going to have a problem turning it around. Here's Matt Chapman. In there for strike one. Now snap throw to first. And Turner's back in. Turner runs. That's in for a strike. Safe at second, and he easily steals the bag. Well, he picked over once just before the pitch to check on him, but that didn't seem to slow up his jump on the pitch at all. I think that guy's been studying some video. Awesome job to be... Throw to second, yeah. safe. The pitch. That one off the mark. It's a ball and two strikes. Rudder at second, two down. The next offering misses. Two balls, two strikes. Got him swinging for the strikeout. Couldn't catch up to the heater. One left for Miami, but they hold the 2 nothing lead. Is this redemption for my soul? Welcome back. John Chomby with Chris Singleton and set to lead off the fourth, Austin Slater. And a pitch. Just missed. Ripped on a line. That skips over the fence, so it's an automatic double. Great effort out there as he tries to reach and haul this one in, but just can't extend far enough. I think it started with a bad read off the bat, which led to a bad jump, bad angle, and that cost him right there extra bases. Now Correa up to hit. First offering misses the mark. Fought off foul. Well, here's a good opportunity in this inning to get on the scoreboard after that leadoff hit and 
part of the order coming up right behind them. This is where they need to get going. Swing and a miss. One, ball, One and two. two Slater leads off second with nobody out. Got him looking. That's a strikeout. And next will be the cleanup hitter, Jose Miranda. Single to right in his first trip. That one's in there, 0 and 1. Not what he's looking for there in the 0 0 count. Looks like he wants the ball down in the zone. Next pitch misses way outside. Runner at second here, one gone. And a foul ball. Looked like you got a little excited on that fastball. You've got to think to yourself, I want to stay up the middle. That way, if you're a little bit early, you hit it out of the ballpark. If you're a little late, opposite field not. Foul ball still, a one and two count. The pitch. In the air, left field. A Rosarena moving under it. Makes the grab, and there's two gone. Here's the catcher, Nick Fortes. Went down on strikes his first time through. And that's in there for strike one. That clips the inside corner for a strike. Perhaps not quite ready to hit. First two pitches by him for a couple of strikes. Now back is against the wall. He's going to have to figure something out and figure it out quickly. Swings through that, and it's a strikeout. That ends the frame. Mets strand one. They trail it here 2-0. Back here at the ballpark, ready to go for the last half of the inning. And now for the Marlins, Randy Arozarena. The big lefty turns, kicks, deals. That one is absolutely belted. That'll touch down off the base of the fence. Safely into second. He's got a double. Nice double right there. Loud contact coming off the bat. Didn't get enough air under to drive it out of here, but you'll take that swing and that result every time. Here's Tim Anderson. The walk and a run scored his first time. And the first oh, offering no is friend. not close. Swings through that. Next pitch nope. is inside. And yeah, that's ball two. In the air, center field. Slater gets under it. Squeezes it. Runner tags it second, but now he won't try for third. Stays put with one away. Now it's Charlie Blackman. Singled and scored his first time. In there and it's 0 and 1. Is there a little wrinkle to that? I think there was. Yeah. A little slider action. Next pitch oh, is outside. Oh, Runner leads away at second. Squirts away a little bit, tosses to first. That's out number two. Well, classic pitch sequencing there to change eye levels for the punch out. That fastball on the pitch before was off. It was very competitive, and that gets you thinking that he might try to climb the ladder. But then the curveball out of that same tunnel just falls off the table, and you can't make contact. Guriel now in the box, comes up empty with a swing there. 0-2 oh, as he waves at that one. 
Well, I know they've gotten out to an early lead, but you don't want to take these opportunities for granted. With two outs, still lock in with a quality at bat. Now a check on him at second, back safely. Oh, and two now. Out towards left center. Slater makes the catch, and that'll do it. Marlins leave one. They're up to nothing. And welcome back. All set for the start of the inning. Now the left fielder, Jerickson Profar. And the pitch. Yeah. Going one. He's pitching well, but not throwing a ton of first pitch strikes. Usually doesn't work out for success, but you can never predict baseball. Hey. Next offering is in for a strike. Right-hander kicks, deals. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Couldn't catch up to the heater. Well, that at-bat seemed to be over as soon as it started. Three-pitch strikeout. You've got to be better at the plate right there, at least to foul something off, extend that at-bat. Next is the designated hitter, Nick Ahmed. 0 for 1 so far. Check swing. Went around. Strike one. Well, on the mound, very efficient. Able to produce an outcome, it seems like, within the third or fourth pitch of just about every at bat. Now, there's a pitch we haven't seen in a while. It's going to be tough on the hitters if he can mix that in whenever he wants. Rips one to right, and foul ball. Fights it off, you'll see another. Kicks and deals. And that's down it away. Well, that's kind of what you expect in an 0-2 count. Excellent job of the hitter to have the plate discipline to lay off of that pitch. And the righty deals. Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. Eighth pitch of the at-back coming up. Here's a swing and a drive left field, and he knew it. That one felt good. His first homer of the year, it's 2-1. That was blasted. Absolutely no doubt off the bat. With a low 90s fastball, you have to live on the edges and hit your spots. If you don't, you'll get hit hard. Really good swing there. Patient, waited for it. It was like BP all over again. Base is empty, one away. Andy Pajes up now for the Mets. First offering, and it just misses. There's a strike. Next offering is in for a strike. He's been able to go inside as well as outside, effectively working both sides of the plate in this at bat. Next pitch has popped up. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. Two away down. Now Third baseman, Jacob. Two outs, base is empty. Jacob Berry getting ready to hit. In there for strike one. Out to short. Trey Turner gloves it. In plenty of time to first. Out number three. Mets do get one back, though, on the solo homer. And this is now a 2-1 ball game. We head to the bottom of the fifth. Now it's the Marlins catcher, Christian Vasquez. Oh, 
to wide to kick the pitch. Bounce to the left side. Grabs it barehanded, and that's a great play for the out. Well, he's doing a nice job of keeping the ball out of the air. Let's the defense work behind him with another ground ball. Good execution. Here's Starling Marte. And that one is lifted in the air. Slater gets under it. Hauls it in to away. Designated hitter. Kyle Schwarber, the next up for the Marlins. The outfield shifted pretty heavily towards right field. And first offering is fouled off. The wind of the pitch. And a swing and a miss. Chris, we were excited to watch him pitch. This is a little more along the lines of what we we're expecting performance-wise. Yeah, Boo, great pitchers like this. You may get one opportunity in one inning to get to him, to get some runs up on the board. And if you don't take it then, you may see zeros the rest of the ball game. And that one hit 97 on the gun. Nothing doing for the Marlins. They lead it 2-1. Back here in Miami, and now it's the switch hitting second baseman, Jamal Howe. And here it comes. And the first pitch misses for ball one. Now Hopkins. And his first big league hit is a double. Runner in scoring position. No outs. Austin Slater stands in. One for two. A free pass coming with nobody out and the runner at second. Looks like they're shooting for the double play. Here's Carlos Correa. A guy who makes an impact not just at the plate, but also in the field. Hit in the air, right field. Makes the grab. Runner tags up for third. And he moves up 90 feet. Runners at the corners now. One away. Two on, one out. And here's the first baseman, Jose Miranda. On the ground, right side. Feeds to second, out there. Back to first for two, and that'll do it. So no runs here on a base hit, no errors, and one left. Hard of the order, three, four, five, coming up. It's the Marlins two, and the Mets one. Welcome back. Trey Turner now singing. He's a guy that covers both sides of the plate about as well as anyone in the sport. How difficult is that to do? I'll just look at the back of my bubblegum card. You'll see how hard it is. These guys are great, man. They have the ability to look out there, but also to be able to turn on the inside pitch. Those that can really sharpen things on the outer half, those are the ones that become elite. Slater gets under it. Pulls it down, and he makes the catch. And there's one away. Matt Chapman up to the plate now. Outfield playing very deep, not wanting anything over their heads. That one's in there, 0 and 1. Chapman measures six feet even, 29 years old, and he took home a gold glove in 2021. Back to the mound. Tosses to first. Two up, two down. Randy Rosarena, the next up for the Marlins. 
On a line out towards center. Slater makes the catch, and that'll do it. Miami down in order as they're on a Back here at Lone Depot Park, top of inning number seven. And here's the catcher, Nick Fortes. The pitch. And a foul ball. The wind of the pitch. And there's a ball. And that one just missed off the outside edge. He swings and fouls one off. Kicks and fires. In the air right field. Pretty well struck. That's back there. Turning and looking and it's gone. A shot to the opposite field. And we have a tie ball game. It's 2-2. Good hitter gets pitch recognition early. He saw exactly where that was going to be. The challenge, not get over anxious and come out of your swing. He stayed on it and got all of it. So up next, Jerks and Profar. Paul Seawall taking over on the mound. He's into the game with the bases empty. Yeah, he swings and misses, and it's nothing in one. Always exciting to see a leadoff home run in an inning. Kind of gets the offense fired up, and you start to expect a big inning. Next offering is in for a strike. And a pitch. Keeps the at bat going with a foul ball. Puts it in the air out towards left center. And out number one on the grab. And now the Mets DH, Nick Ahmed. He's already homered in this game. And that's in there for strike one. Well, we call that keyholing. Even though it's right there and looks pretty good, if he doesn't love it, he's not going to swing that early in the count. Nope. Next pitch is downstairs. Right into the plate. Swing and a miss. And it's one and two. And the one two misses to even the count. Foul ball, another two two upcoming. Really great change of speeds. He goes off the off speed to the fastball, and the hitter doesn't know what's coming next. Still two and two after the foul ball. And the right-hander deals. And that just misses. This is a really good feeling for a hitter. At this point in the ball game, you know that they don't want to walk you. So you're going to get a pitch to hit. You just better not miss it. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Good pitch right there. I mean, he's attacking a location that this guy at the plate tends to have trouble with. And there's just so much information in this day and age. Sometimes too much information. But the guys that can take that information, process it, and then go out there, Boog, and execute the pitch. Go right after that. Oh, that plunked him. And that's now twice he's been hitting this one. Now that can happen when you're trying to dive out over the plate so you can control the outer half. Very difficult to get out of the way of good velocity in. Barry stands in now and watches strike one.
you're a base runner, you've got to stay dialed in here. Look for anything in the dirt. Try your best to get into scoring position. Two outs. Foul ball still 0-2. The pitch stays alive. At the belt and fires. That one down the line, and it gets by him. Jacob Berry with his first major league hit. And this is a moment I'm sure he'll never forget. Congrats. Yeah, great moment for him and his family. A guy works so hard and has to wait so long for this to happen. And when it does, it can kind of be overwhelming, dude. You still have to stay locked in on the game, but it's great when you can take a minute to just appreciate what you've done and how hard you've worked to get here. Pajes at second. Berry on at first with two down. That one spoiled, and they count now 2-1. Yeah, I'm surprised we didn't see a visit from the pitching coach here. Just to remind him, focus on the hitter. Don't worry about anything else. Nice. Next offering clips the zone count, even at 2. The other way. Makes the grab, and that'll end the inning. But the Mets get even on this solo homer. 2-2 game. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. Back here at the ballpark. Now it's the second baseman, Tim Anderson. Rodon back to work. Good eye right there. Swings and misses at the breaking ball in the dirt. And now the lefty. There's a swing and a drive. And it's gone! An absolute blast to left. His first homer of the year. Just like that, they move in front. It's 3-2. Lightning fast hands to be able to hit that velocity fastball on the inside part of the plate. In my experience, when you're looking out over the plate, allowing the ball to travel, it's pure reaction to hit a pitch in that location. That's a tremendous swing. Here comes the manager out of the dugout, and he'll make a move for the bullpen. Carlos Rodon is done in this one, and he kept him in it even though he's in line for the loss right now. New arm when we come back. Eli Morgan gets handed the rock out of the pen. He's being eased into the game here with the bases empty. Number 49. There's Chuck Nasty. The outfield shifted pretty heavily towards right field. Marlins making a move for a pinch hitter. Eric Hosmer. And it's fouled away. The old one. Swings through that one out in front that time. Activity in the bullpen. Dylan Lee up and throwing. Swing and a ball lifted in the air. Shallow left field. Profar puts the squeeze on that one. And there's one down. Yuli Gurriel comes up to hit.
swing and a ball hammered left field. That one's carrying. And that ball is out of here. Yuli Gurriel comes through, and they add on. It's 4-2. Singy, he's been red hot. Yeah, another big swing of the bat for him. Man, he is really seeing the ball well in this one. Well, he went up there, oh, oh, looking to do damage. I think he had his sights set on that pitch. He went and got it and circled the bases. And now it's Christian Vasquez. And first offering is fouled off. This to third. Slings it across. And Vasquez is gone. The center fielder, Starling Marte up to him. It's amazing. We get a chance to talk to a lot of opposing managers. This guy scares managers on the other team as much as anyone and he gets to fly beneath the radar with the other more recognizable name and there's the third out that'll do it for the inning but the long ball was working in this inning not once but twice it's now 4-2 major league baseball is on the show Now into the game, Tommy Pham. He takes over and right. And welcome back. New inning getting started. Now the number two hitter, Austin Slater. And the pitch. Strike one. All one's the count. pitch got him swinging oh nothing too fancy on the strikeout pitch right there just a low 90s fastball and I'm not sure he was trying to challenge him but that's pretty much what happened very hittable location but he found a way to just get it by him Correa batting with one down takes a strike the pitch Smash to the left side, and it goes just foul. And a swing and a miss, down on strikes. That's his second strikeout. Just indecisive in that at bat. He couldn't commit to the slider, tried to sit in between, just not able to put the bat on the ball. And next will be the Mets cleanup hitter, Jose Miranda. Swings through that one. 0-1. Oh and one. Now this guy is just filling up the strike zone right now. Don't want to get yourself in an 0-2 hole. You better be ready to pull the trigger on the first pitch. Comes up empty on the swing. 0-2 oh now. And he deals. Got it by him for the K. Impeccable command in that one. Three batters, three strikeouts. That's electric stuff out there on the mound. Back now, new pitcher on the mound as we roll into the bottom of the eighth, Dylan Lee. And they felt it was time to bring on a left-handed reliever from the pin with the lefty hitter coming up. I think it's a good move. I know I never liked when opposing teams did that to me. Pitch. Schwarber, ball, the next right to hit, takes ball one. Oh. 
Left hand batter waits. Strike two. Just a really nice slider down and in there. He wants to get the hitter thinking fastball, speed him up, and just subtract some velocity and add a little movement. Next offering is downstairs. Next offering is foul back. Him looking for the K. Third time he struck out in this one, and definitely an individual performance you want to flush. He just hasn't looked very comfortable up there. Just one of those days. But when you're still winning the ball game, at least you can focus on doing your part to maintain that lead and getting that W. And first offering is fouled off. Here comes a pitch. On the ground to short. Correa over to first. And they get Turner for the out. Now and here is Matt Chapman. Outfield deep here, trying to prevent anything over their heads. First pitch doesn't find the zone. Action in the Mets bullpen. Kyle Nelson, the left-hander, up and throwing. The 1-0. Chapman gets a piece there. Kicks and deals. Oh, that's inside. To the left center base hit. Joey gets on base and keeps it going. Well, that was one of those high percentage advantage counts where batting averages are just so much higher. When you can turn a ball around at 107 off the bat, it's going to make you feel really good inside. If he elevates that a little bit more, it's definitely out of here. And here is Randy Arozarena. And he swings and misses at the initial offering. Chapman, the runner at first with two gone. And he's down 0-2 as he swings through it. On the mound, you take a note. You see the hitter's willingness to chase that pitch upstairs. Get deeper in the count. Try to climb the ladder. And here it comes. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And he's down on strikes for the second time today. One left for Miami as they can't add to their 4-2 lead. New pitcher for the Marlins, Ryan Presley. Well, the best relievers love the opportunity to come in and protect a tight lead late in the ball game. Some of them are just wired different, so we'll see what he's got here. And a pitch. Fortes leading things off and takes a strike. Next pitch misses. One and one. Good eye right there. Two balls, one strike. Two two swings through it and that's a strikeout. Well, that right there is what you want to see out of your closer. Come in and close the door, cancel any hope that that opponent has in making some type of comeback in the ball game. Tell you what, that helps him settle in and that helps everybody else relax a little bit to get these other two outs. Profar in the box now, no balls and a strike. Next offering is fouled back.
And a pitch. Struck him out looking. This is definitely what a team likes to see out of their closer. Come in and just destroy all hope. First two batters, two strikeouts. See if he can strike out the side. So now here's the Mets DH. Nick Ahmed. He's already homered here in this one. That hits the ball dirt. One, no ball three. one. That's in there. One ball, one strike. Ball. Next one misses. Now two balls and a strike. Just ball, missed. Ball, 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 ball. Pressure mountain right here with the tying run and the on deck circle. He's got to find the strike zone. And a swing and a miss, and that is the ball game. Well, his first save of the season is in the books, and that was a nice job of him coming in the game and closing it out. He's off and running now. And your final 4-2 for Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show. I'm John Chomby. Thanks for joining us.